Made them as realistic as I could with realistic feathers um, for the wings and the tail and even down the back. I even made the facial markings are very realistic. Even the little legs and claws are very realistic, even though I covered them with a real pretty ribbon to kind of make them a little fancier. And I thought you guys might like to know the steps that I took to make them from scratch. So this video will show you the materials that I used and how I made them. <music> So I began with a paper cutout of the shape of the bird that I wanted with a nice long neck and a full body. I put that paper cutout on a nice linen blue material that I had that matched the color of the feathers. And you want to double the fabric so that when you cut it out you'll have two of those pieces to sew together. Now I did not use the machine to do my sewing. All I used was just a simple needle and thread and just hand sewed it nice and tight with small stitches and when I cut it out I did maybe a little fourth of an inch beyond the paper cutout. This wire is a coated plastic wire you can see the little branches it's a leftover wire from a flower and that I use for the skeletal structure as well as this dry foam. Now this dry foam is used for dried uh, and silk flowers not fresh flowers and that will form the hard skeletal structure of the head and also um, as you can see here you want that head shape to be nice and round but it's also used as the holder for your feathers down in the base of the body of the bird so that you can stick your feathers in at an angle and keep them nice and straight with that solid structure inside the other part of the bird the neck and the stomach is is made with this cotton polyfill, this really polyfill soft stuff that you can pull apart and push in. Those feet that I made, the legs and feet, were made with very thick floral wire, uh, a strong gauge, not a real thin um, bendable one, but one that with a real strong gauge to it. And then I taped them together, three wires at a time with the floral tape and this is like a skinny one and you'll want three toes there's the length of the leg three toes in the front and one toe in the back and those will all be taped and then after um, you got them all put together you'll hot glue this real pretty brown ribbon on um, so that it has a nice coated brown look to it not totally ugly like the bird in real life but it will be a pretty realistic color then um, I used these really pretty bright blue feathers. Um, I cut them apart and used them to cover the back of the bird to cover up that middle seam that is there from the material. And um, then I used part of those to cover up. There's the back of the bird. It goes down over the tail too to uh, cover up some of that foam that shows at the top of the tail also underneath the tail where there's foam showing you can cover those up with the blue feathers now I ordered off eBay real peacock feathers and you can get them about 10 to 12 inches long these are a different type of peacock tail feathers that go along the side of the tail um, they're a real pretty lining to the outside of the tail. There's the outside edge with those straight looking feathers whereas the inside's filled with the regular feathers. Now this is a small bead that I use for the eyes. Um, it has a hole through it that you can stick a very skinny floral wire through and then make a slit in the material and then push it down into the foam that's inside the head. The colors for the head I used with real pretty fingernail polish. That one there has a lot of glitter in it so it sparkles. Then you have the white fingernail polish used for the white markings on his face. 
Then this bronze fingernail polish I used on the bend of a cardboard. You want to cut out the bend of the cardboard and use the folded part for the beak you know, with that bronze pretty fingernail polish. These are the feathers that I use for the wings. The wings are more of a natural color, uh, kind of striped, and I got those at Hobby Lobby to use. Now these are called um, bamboo skewers, and what they are is they're like huge toothpicks and I use them to extend the length of the feathers for the tail. The feathers for the tail, um, some of them you'll have to clip short, some of them you use the length they are, but others must be a lot longer to reach farther down um, the length that you want. I just attached them with uh, floral tape, the feather to the skewer. Now I use corsage pins to attach those little feathers to the head and you just clip that pearl right off that pin. By the way, these little wire clippers that I'm using are a very strong little wire clipper that can even cut through the plastic coated wire of your floral stems. So if you can find these, these are wonderful. Now the base of your peacock feathers, you can clip those off and use those as the head feathers, attaching them with the clipped off corsage pin down into the foam in the head. Now underneath you'll notice those skewers covered with green floral tape extending the tail feathers. Now I covered all the foam and stuff under there with those blue feathers to make it look nice and neat. The wing feathers can be glued to a piece of felt the shape of a wing and just simply glued on the bird. Then the feet are wrapped in a pretty ribbon and inserted into a piece of foam under the belly of the bird and covered up with the blue feathers. And that's it. That's so boring. Okay, so you've cut out the piece of material, leaving a lot of room for the head. And you sew right along that backbone there, and then you sew right around the bottom edge too. But you leave the tail portion open, and you also leave the head portion open so that you can put in the backbone and the stuffing and the styrofoam. I'm turning it inside out. I'm sticking in the backbone, which is that plastic coated wire, floral stem. Then you stuff it full of that cotton and stuff it nice and tight because the peacock is actually a little fat. So then push the foam head piece down onto the top of the wire. Then take the bottom foam piece that goes in by the tail and shove it onto the wire nice and snug also so that both pieces of foam are shoved snug onto the wire. Then you can take the material and put it around the foam piece of the tail to kind of cover up that attachment part. Now the head piece you're going to sew it um, by hand shut the rest of the way and you'll want to take the edges of the fabric and fold them under like that so that you can grab the folds of the fabric and sew the folds together. And so leave plenty of fabric on the headpiece so that that's possible. Now the beak is made out of this cardboard and you want to cut it and have the folded part of the cardboard already there um, cut from some box or something. And then you just cut a slant up to a point making the fold the center of the piece but then you fold it right next to the center to give kind of the middle ridge of the nose because this is going to be the beak. So you have a middle ridge and then he kind of has a little bend to the end of his beak. So I folded that piece of cardboard down just at the tip there. Take a sharp instrument such as a pencil to make your nostril holes and um, just kind of shove them into the cardboard nice and tight there so that it goes all the way through to look like a nostril hole and then do it on the other side as well. When that's all done you go ahead and paint it with your fingernail polish maybe a bronze color. Then you take a glue gun and simply glue the edge of that top part of the beak and just stick it on the bird's head right where the beak needs to be. Then you take the bottom half and glue it to the bottom but just not, a not little about bit half -time separate. Show. There's my son. Um, so that it looks almost like its beak is trying to open and make sure the beak is not too big or it'll look like a crow. Um, just make it um, a real good size for a peacock. Now we're taping the wires that we're going to be using for the feet and you take um, four of them, tape all four and then group them together because each leg has four wires taped together. You want to leave about a half to three quarters inch 
untaped together at the top and then leave about oh two two and a half inches untaped at the bottom those will be your three toes to the front one toe to the back and then you'll fold them in half so that they're thicker and then at the end you will take um, some type of tool like your pliers and crimp the end so that it doesn't have those little loops on the end then you will tape the toes together and so at the top you'll have the prongs that you'll be putting into the foam and at the bottom you have the four toes and those are your legs then you bend it to the form that it's going to be it's going to have to have a knee at the back right underneath the prongs and then it's going to have its little foot bent downward so when you take your ribbon and hot glue the ribbon on you'll want it to be in the shape that it's already going to be because if you hot glue the ribbon and then bend it in shape the ribbon may become um, I don't know gapped or loose and it, it just looked better if you already had it the shape it's going to be and then you glue the ribbon on make sure your ribbon is nice and tight and doesn't have any gaping holes where you can see the green tape underneath and just um, make it a nice smooth spiral downward as you go and just put like a drop of glue every two or three twists or so and so that's what it looks like all finished um, with the toes and everything done do not put ribbon around the prongs that go into the foam because they won't stick in as well now you're ready to put the eyes in or to paint where the eyes are going to be so this is your little bead that you're using for the eye and you put a wire through it and make it long enough so that it will stick down into the foam inside the head then you take your pair of scissors and make a little slit where you want the eye bead to be because you're actually going to make um, eyelids for it okay so make sure they're the same place on either side right back from the middle of the top beak and just make that slit big enough for the bead and then the first part that we're going to paint we're going to paint with that glitter paint and it'll be a kind of a real pretty color that goes around the eyeball stretching back from the beak and it's inside the white parts and so that pretty sparkly darker teal part goes on first and it will go right around the slit that you cut for the eye that way the material will not um, keep ripping any farther and then after that dries you paint on the white part around the eye with a nice thick white fingernail polish now make sure it's not a runny fingernail polish that will just soak into the material make sure that it's a nice very thick white um, fingernail polish that will stay on top of the material and um, so you want to shape it up like if you have a little toothpick or a little wire there try to get the edges nice and clean then after that dries you'll want to open up those eyelids again to prepare for inserting the bead of the eye and it should be that your um, slit is large enough if your slit is not large enough you can go ahead and cut it just a little bit larger so that the bead can fit down inside and the eyelid come out over the bead and that way you can open the bird's eye just as far as you want it you can see there it's almost looks like it's closed but you can open your bird's eye as far as you want it if you have the slit big enough and that way you can push the bead down in to the foam that's inside the head now we're going to put the feathers on his back to cover up that back seam and with these feathers that I bought I just wanted the flat part to put on the seam to cover up that seam so I'm going to be taking the hot glue gun and gluing the feathers on the back there is a ridge on the back of the feathers that seems to stick out more than on the front so you just put a little drop of glue on the tip of that ridge and just tap it in with your finger and start at the bottom where the tail is and work your way up so it's like a cascading effect then after you get all those flat feathers glued on around the seam I like to put a nice little fluffy touch around the edge of the feathers so I take one of the bottom parts of the feather and tuck it down underneath those flat feathers that way there's just like a little fluffy edge in between the material and the edge of the flat feathers 
and I do that on both sides. Then as I get ready to do the tail feathers, I trim this foam on the tail so there are layers that will be able to allow the feathers to cascade as I stick them in at the different levels. I want to trim that bottom part of the foam and then stick on the little legs there um, on either side of the bottom of the foam and then start sticking your feathers in. I started with the ones that I didn't have to cut and put them right in the middle so that the shorter ones you can cut shorter than that and put them on top and then the longer ones you can put on the skewers and put on the bottom. But save what you cut off of the bottom of the ones that are cut short. You save that piece right there because you'll need it for the head feathers later. Now here are some feathers that I taped to the skewers and as you can see I taped the skewers all the way to the tip so that the the skewer itself will be camouflaged more of a green color instead of the white wood color and then just stick them in as a nice fan shape and stagger them and make them real pretty okay now here you'll see um, the bottom of the feathers that I cut off earlier and I'm trimming off those little green feather parts just to have that spine of the feather and so all you have is a white spine and it could be black on the back side but the front side should be white and after you trim all these little spines and little feathers off the side of that you'll be sticking in one that's the head feathers that you're going to be using them for you'll be sticking in a corsage pin that's had the top cut off to stick the cut off part into the spine of the thing and then put the sharp part down into the head of the bird down into that foam that's inside and then you fan it out it's straight back almost from the eye and you fan it out and then you trim them all to the shape of the head to the curve of the head so have them oh I'd say about two and a half three inches away from the head and trim them all to the same height now what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut off the really fuzzy part of the blue feathers that you had earlier where you put the flat part on the back and you're gonna hot glue those little fuzzy parts to the very tip of these feather spines that you just inserted into the head and you'll want to hot glue them all around on both sides so it's all covered then you trim them um, so they're not all wispy and feathery but they're a, real, a nice trim short like a nice short haircut nice and tidy all around on top and everything following again the curve of the head now on the bottom here where you stuck the feet in go ahead and hot glue and cut your material around so that you can wrap the material up put hot glue on the foam there and you can see I cut off a pretty good chunk off the bottom because it was too bulky it's much better to start out with too much foam than to not have enough foam because if you fill the foam too much it cracks so we're folding the material and gluing it to the foam and now we're hot gluing some of the blue feathers to cover up the thumb. We'll be doing that on his back and we'll be doing that underneath and you can do it around on the sides. Anywhere where foam is showing you can hot glue those little blue feathers on there and have it overlapping onto the wing itself. Then you take the flat part of the feathers and kind of layer those on top so it, it fits in with a nice cascade of flat feathers that you already put on the back. Here I'm gluing the feathers underneath to cover the foam and to cover parts of the material that I glued. Now this is the felt piece that I used for the wing. I already cut the felt in the shape of the wing and these longer feathers I'll be putting underneath that felt piece. I cover the felt piece with the short feathers. I hot glue them on and I completely cover the piece of felt so you can't see it. All you see is feathers and I cut off the very tip of it so it's nice and rounded no little feather stems sticking out <clears throat> then you hot glue that felt piece really good especially on the top and then just place it right where a wing would be a nice folded wing to the side of the bird and you do that with both sides then you take these long feathers and you stick them underneath that piece of felt hot glue them on and stick them underneath that piece of felt so it looks like an extension of the wing that goes almost under the tail. You can see it going farther back because their wings and in real life are kind of long so um, we're going to take those little long feathers and glue them actually to the body of the bird 
right underneath that piece of felt. So now you've lengthened the wing like a natural wing of a peacock would be and it looks very beautiful. And these are your final steps. So hopefully you have enjoyed this project and it's gone just the way that you wanted it to. And you'll end up with a beautiful peacock like these. They're such a beautiful bird. And these peacocks are quiet. They don't make any messes. You don't have to feed them. See, look at those beautiful colors. Oh my goodness. But we are so thankful for our beautiful peacocks because this is what you could be hearing if you had a real peacock.